Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, Father's Day today, so fellas, happy Father's Day. You too. Thank you. Yes, it's always his day. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Let's uh, let's open with a cert with our hymn this morning by my faith. What's up to thee? And uh, where would we be without faith? You know, our, we trust have trust the Lord for every day. All right. My faith looks up to me. Love am a Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my gifts away. Oh, let me from this day be holy. to you once again we thank you Lord today for all the dads Lord that those that you have entrusted children to and you have called them to be the role models of others as well Lord all those fellows have been called to be a role model and Lord, we just pray you would encourage dads to stand tall and be a man. 
and be the one that God has called to be. Lord, we just pray you would help us keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the wedding yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for blessing it in such a wonderful way. And we praise you, Lord, for a future that is founded in Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for Gloria today. You would touch her, Lord, you know, the struggle she's had for surgery. And Lord, we just pray that you would also touch Kevin. Lord, you know the battle he's having in his heart. We just pray that you would just touch him. And Lord, cause his heart to just relax. And the Lord, just calm his nerves. Help him deal with the stress and the tension supply. And Lord, you promise peace that passes all understanding that would be and abide in your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. We claim that in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. You're the healer. And you're our peace. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray for the fair that's coming up. Lord, we know that there's just a lot of responsibilities. And Lord, pray that you just guide and direct in every step, everything we do. And Lord, we just pray that you would be glorified. We pray you continue to touch Terry and bring healing to him. And Lord, encourage with him, Sandy. And so, God, we just pray that you would just work miraculous things out in Jesus' name. Bless our service now, we pray, Lord, today. And may your name be glorified, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Scripture this morning I'd like to share just a few verses from Proverbs chapter 10. It says the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasure of a wicked profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth them from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he that but he casts away the substance of the wicked. Amen. <clears throat> and now I just praise the Lord for family. I praise the Lord for my kids and how they're such a blessing to me. And you know, when they show honor to me, they're dead. And I tell you, that's a whole lot of words. I appreciate that. of heaven are open. God wants to bless. Isn't it a good thing to know? God wants to bless His people. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave Garden. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm free. 
says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so we don't have to be afraid and it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts not by might nor by power but by my spirit, saith the Lord, this mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. And this mountain shall be removed. By my spirit, saith the Lord, not by mind, nor by mind, but by my spirit, saith the Lord.
cable and then I also be up on, on our YouTube channel and then uh, uh, on Wednesday night Bible study over at, at Sharon's at 630 and then uh, next Sunday is going to be a busy day again we have our Sunday school starting at 930 and our worship at 11 then next Sunday night we have our concert here again at, at Gosen at 7 o'clock and uh, the concert this time will be uh, uh, Cowboy Band, is that? Yeah, Cowboy Band. And uh, this, is going to, this is going to be good. And, uh, and this is going to be uh, Suzanne Shear from Macintosh, and then also uh, Jesse Kwam will be here, and then uh, Rod, Pastor Ron Swanson and his wife Twyla will also be with them. And they're from uh, over by Bagley. So anyway, from the Calvary Church. And so it's going to be a good time. We've got some posters in the back. And so uh, be sure you pick them up and we can get them out and, and advertise. And it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to this. We haven't had them here before. We've had Jesse here, but not the rest of them. So it's going to be a great time. And uh, so if we can get the posters out, let people know, and also be in prayer that God will bring people in. Amen. Anything else that we need to mention today? Appreciate all the work that you ladies did for uh, the wedding yesterday. Uh, I'll tell you, it blessed a lot of people. They were just thrilled with it, and, uh, and so um, praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Everybody was. It was just a happy time. Such a happy time.
Thank you, Jeremy and Anna. <clears throat> Called Jeremy last night and I said, how would you like to sing in the morning? <laughs> Nothing like getting plenty of time. Father's Day, and uh, you know, I think one of the, the two hardest days for me to preach on are Mother's Day and Father's Day. And uh, <clears throat> you know, as I was thinking and pray about relatives this week, the Lord brought me back into the book of Colossians. I preached on it a little bit this morning on a radio broadcast. And, uh, but I'd like to go into this, more, this morning. But let's pray. Father, we ask that you would speak to us through the word this morning. And Lord, that you would 
do and open our minds and our hearts to really what you want us to hear. Lord, you understand us totally. We know so little. So speak to us, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. But in the book of Colossians, and uh, the third chapter, verse th uh, 16 starts out, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. We'll be going further into this. But uh, as I was reading this again last night, you know, we tend to be careless with our words. So many times we say things that we don't mean or things that just kind of pop out of our lips. The thing is that as grown-ups, our kids watch what we do, they listen to what we say, and uh, we've got to be careful. And uh, one of the phrases that uh, I hear quite often when two little girls are in my house is be careful, don't get hurt. Be careful, don't get hurt. They hear that over and over and over. They're learning it well. And uh, you know, it's something, uh, we could change that just a little bit, be careful so we don't hurt anybody else. And the Apostle Paul, as he's writing this, you know, I want to direct it more to fathers today because it's Father's Day. Our kids watch what we do and they hear what we say. And you know one thing that uh, you learn when you have little children, when they are just learning how to talk, you have to be careful what you say because they repeat what you say. And that can get really, really embarrassing when they repeat the wrong things. But they just simply like a parrot, you know, they repeat what they hear. And uh, we may say things in jest or in a moment of frustration even. And like uh, my, uh, quite some time ago, one of my brothers, grandsons, or grandchildren, he's still learning how to talk, and he said to mom, he says, are you angry or just frustrated? And <laughs> children don't always understand our emotions. But he's, Paul says, whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus giving thanks to the Father, thanks to God, and the Father by Him. You know, our attitude determines so much on who we are. And, uh, I, you know, I've heard people say, make this comment, and they've uh, looked at me, and you know, this is, you know, especially years ago, they, uh, people that knew my dad, and they make comment like, I can see your dad in you. And you know, the, the older I got, the more I appreciated my dad. When you're young, you tend to not appreciate those who are older than you are. And uh, you kind of let things slip by and you don't really appreciate it. But as we get older, we begin to see things through different eyes. 
And when I heard people say, well, I, I can see your dad in you, to me that was a compliment. Because then they would go on and they would talk about what my dad meant to them. And things that were some of the beautiful qualities that my dad had. This morning, Nathan called me again as I was on the way to church, and we talked a long time. And um, I left early for church this morning, and, and so we had time to talk. And we began talking about my dad, the kids' his grandpa. And I was telling him, I said, you know, my dad had a burden to reach some of the old bachelors that were in our area. You know, guys that nobody else wanted to go and see? And, but Dad had to pay a price to do it. But there was one old bachelor that, uh, well, his uh, favorite beverage came in cans that left him a little high every time. And, uh, and he drank so much that... Uh, that uh, he started out, I mean, he spent a lot of time in his bed, probably because he couldn't walk too good. You know, when you get tipsy, he better stay where it's soft. But he drank until, and he, he just tossed the beer can aside and grabbed another. Until his bedroom got so full of beer cans, he couldn't get to his bed anymore. So then he had to move his bed out of the bedroom and into the living room. And then he'd throw them through the door into the bedroom until it just filled up in there with beer cans. And then they started filling up the living room. And when the living room filled up, he moved into the kitchen. That was the only room he had left. And, and finally the kitchen was filling up with beer cans. And my dad, he, he knew this old fella. And uh, he went over to see him one day. And he said, uh, I went over there and I want to talk to him about the Lord. But sometimes to talk to somebody about the Lord case takes a little price. And he said, I walked in and the old fella, he invited me to his, into his kitchen. And, uh, and he said, we started talking and then the old fella says to him, uh, could I get you a cup of coffee? He knew my dad didn't drink beer. He said, could I get you a cup of coffee? And my dad, polite, you know, gentlemen, he says, sure, I, I would love that. Well, the old fella starts digging through the beer cans on the floor, and he was scratching around and shoving cans around. He said, I know there's got to be a cup around here someplace. Finally, he dug a cup out and he brought it up, and my dad looked at that cup. And it was filthy. He didn't know what it had been used for. And then the guy looked at it and he had the coffee pot on, so it was it was perking, you know. And he said that I, I couldn't see the bottom of that pot. He said, I don't know how long it's been perking. But he said what got to me is the old fella, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a handkerchief. He said, I don't know if that hanky had been washed this year or the one before. He said it was as dirty as the cup. He grabbed that cup, he stuck that dirty handkerchief in it, and he wiped the grime out of it, and picked up the coffee pot and filled it with coffee, and he handed it to my dad. And his dad said, you know, I had to be gracious. I thanked him and uh, did my best to drink what was in that cup. And he wasn't totally sure. He said it, it looked like tar. But he said, I drank it. But he said in the process of it, I got to talk to the man about Jesus Christ. He was willing to pay a price. And he said, after, after a while, he said, I realize this guy is starting to really listen to me. And so he said finally to the fellow, he says, could I go and get my pastor and bring him here? He can talk to you. 
a little further than Ikea. The guy said, okay. And so dad went and got the pastor, brought him over. And I'm not sure just how it turned out. But uh, dad said, you know, it was so hard drinking that coffee. But he said, if it meant this old fellow reaching this yeah. in Christ, he said it was worth the, worth the risk. And he said, but one thing he said, I, I, I'd never gotten to do is actually lead a soul to Christ all the way. There was another old fellow that was sick and he was dying. And he said nobody could talk to him about God. And he said, the Lord said to me, go and talk to him about Jesus. Dad got in his car, he drove over to him. There sits this crusty old fellow. Dad walks into his house. And this old guy's sitting there and he's not looking too good. And my dad said to him, Have you ever, would you like to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? And the old fellow looked at him, and knowing he's dying, he says, Yes, I would. My dad didn't go for the preacher this time. He said, Would you pray with me right now? And that fellow prayed the sinner's prayer and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. Years later, I got to talk to some of his family, that, that fellow that then led to Christ, and tell this family how he had given his life to Jesus that day. And these relatives, they said, we didn't know he got saved. He died shortly after. We thought he was lost forever. And there was great rejoicing in the family because of that day my dad went to that man and talked to him about Jesus. And when I look back at the times that we've had, people ask us, why have you spent so many years telling people about Jesus Christ? I can tell them I had a good example. And you know, that's what God wants us to do as men, is to set examples for our kids. That they can, when they follow us, it'll lead to the right place. And this is just so vital, it's so important. The scripture goes on, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as, as it is fit in the Lord. And uh, you know what? I've told that story before about that old about that couple of years ago, where this lady came to me and she said, uh, it was after one of our services, one a meeting on the on the west on the western states, and she said after the meeting, well, I better go home. When I get home, my husband's going to beat me up again. He does every time I go to church, he beats me up. And I said to her, I said, when you, when you get home, what do you do? do you? She said, well, I try to witness to him. I try to tell him, you know, that he needs Jesus and then he beats me up. I said, let me give you some advice. Tonight when you go home, what I want you to do is have a big smile on your face. And when, you, and when he sees your smile, he's going to say, what are you smiling about? And you just tell him, we prayed for you tonight, and I know that God's going to come into your heart and save you, and you're going to go to heaven with me. Well, we went on down the road. A year later, we came back, and this lady was there again, and she was still smiling. And I said to her, I said, well, what happened after last year when we were here? She said, I did what you told me. She said, when I got home after that meeting, I had a smile on my face. And I told him what you said to tell him, and he didn't hit me. But she said, you know, I kept smiling. I kept rejoicing. I quit preaching to him. I just started smiling. And do you know what he said? 
You ought to go to church more often. I like what I see. And it was some time later, we received a letter, an envelope of it, with his name on the return. We opened it up and found the obituary of his wife. She had passed away. And he said in there, in the obituary, he sent a check for it, our ministry. And this man, he's written in the obituary, he said, I want all gifts given in memory of my wife to be sent to the Glory Land Gospel Team. People look, people take us at face value. When this woman began to show respect to her husband, it began to win her, his heart. It says, husbands, love your wife and be not bitter against them. You know, I'm afraid that a lot of wives are having a hard time because their husbands are always angry, always criticizing. When the husband criticizes the wife, it makes her life so bad. And we have to watch our tongue because the way that we treat our wives is the way our children treat their mom and later their wives. Talking to a pastor one time, and he asked me a question. He says, "Why is not, why isn't God blessing my ministry?" And I looked him right in the face. I said, "It's because of the way you treat your wife." And he said, "What? What do you mean?" I said, "You do not show your wife respect, especially." among your peers and among other people. You look at her and treat her like she is just a little bit lower than you are. And I said, as long as you do not respect your wife, God will not respect your ministry. You know that advice made a certain wife much happier. Thing. He said, and I asked him, well, why do you do that? He said, because that's the way my dad treated my mom. That's where he learned it. And so we set the example, as fathers, as husbands, we set examples as to how we are supposed to be. It says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is the will of for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. And you know, it's, it's something that is not being taught today, especially in the public school. What we're hearing so much in public schools is demand your rights. You have the right to do what you want to do. You cannot let anybody tell you what to do, even your parents. And so the responsibility of a children to be obedient has been whittled away at. And children are learning today, you don't have to respect mom and dad. But the Bible says it's well pleasing to the Lord. And when God is pleased with what you do, he brings blessings. He brings blessings. We may not always agree with those who are in charge over us, but we still are to respect who they are and, and their position. And then he says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. And you know, this is so, so very important. One time, so many people have asked me the question, how, how did you learn how to forgive? Well, I said, for one thing, I've had a lot of experience at it. <laughs> you learn to forgive by the, all the hurts you have experienced over the years. And one night I preached on forgiveness out in Washington, state of Washington. 
And I made a comment in that service that night that sometimes in anger or things, we say things to our kids that hurt them deeply. We say things that cut them down and make them feel like they're not any good. And I said, made this comment, how many of you have told your child, you're dumb? When I said that, a man sitting there, with a, he and his wife sat there and their teenage son sat between them. When I made that comment, it was almost like I slapped that guy in the face. And he just jumped. And then I saw tears well up in his face. And he began to cry. We gave the invitation, people stood. And I watched this man turn to his teenage son. And standing very close to him, I could see tears running down his face. And I could see him, he was saying something to his boy. And then all of a sudden, Dad and son threw their arms around each other and held each other and cried together. And then the mom got in there too. His dad made things right with his son that day. You know, the image that we have of how to be dads is by our Heavenly Father. We wish each other happy Father's Day. But you know, we need to wish God, our Heavenly Father, a happy Father's Day too, don't we? And our people look, you know, our sons, our children, our daughters, our, we, they look at us to see what they should be. We look at the Heavenly Father to see what we should be. Because He is the perfect example. And like yesterday of this wedding, I've shared that, that the bonding element that holds a marriage together is Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, a marriage is always on shaky ground. We have to have Christ in the middle. If we are going to be people of God, we have to have the Heavenly Father right before us. We have to see Him with our eyes. We have to be the reflection of who the Heavenly Father is. He's the example. And He is a God of love. And as I've told people who have asked me about our church, what's your church all about? I tell them, I said, what our church is about is we are a church of restoration. We want to bring people whose lives perhaps are all messed up, lives that have gone through terrible things, and we want to build them into people of God and give them a life that will bring joy and peace to their hearts. That's what we are about. I don't care where people come from, but I sure care where people are going. And that's what this church is, is all about. Amen. Amen. And over the years, I'll tell you, you wouldn't believe some of the people that we have ministered to. We have ministered to some of the roughest, toughest characters you ever laid eyes on. Like that man that pushed his way through the, through the crowd at the altar years ago. His hair was slicked back. He was wearing a motorcycle jacket. Well, like Kevin. And uh, I don't know if he had a motorcycle that night, but he pushed his way into the crowd and right up in front of me, he wasn't very big. But tears ran down his face. And he said, I have committed every crime there is to commit. He said, I've, I'm carrying a loaded 38 on me right now and I've used it many times. And he said, I've got to get saved. And right there, in the midst of a crowd of people who are praying, 
This man's life was changed, transformed by the power of God. And you see, when we who know Christ make the Heavenly Father the example that we follow, walking in holiness, not according to the, what we're hearing on TV, but we can do anything we want, but looking to Jesus Christ and say, there is our example. Oh, to be like Jesus. That's what I want. When people look at me, I want them to say, you know, you're just like the Heavenly Father. <laughs> I can see God in you. I can see God in you. Now, there's the compliment. And that's what makes a father. But I think of those fathers, those men who have been gone before me. I have talked to people about my, my heritage, my mom and dad, and about my grandpa who was a circuit riding preacher way back very early 1900s. Rode horseback to churches to preach. And I've told about him many times. And uh, I've heard people say, I can sure see why you do the same thing. You travel in that, that uh, covered wagon called motorhome. And traveling all over the country, I can see why you do that after with such a heritage. And I've heard people say, you know, I wish I could have met your grandpa. Well, a better comment is this, to hear people say, I want to meet your God. Because if he, if he is the one that made you what you are, I want to know him. Let's pray. Father, today is Father's Day. And Lord, we pray that you would just honor the dads, the men who are seeking to know, to walk with you. Lord, we know there have been mistakes in the past. We know there's things that we can't, cannot go back and undo because there were things that we did when we were not walking with you like we should have been. We made mistakes. But Lord, we're here today. In our prayer, our desire is to be so like you that we will draw people to you. And they will see the change in our lives today. And so, Lord, speak to us and through us that this Father's Day will be a new beginning in our walk with you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn to the faithful song, Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of our fathers, living still, in spite of the fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts be I with joy, whenever we hear thy glorious word. 
each one now we thank and praise you Lord for your plan and for your purposes in our lives in Jesus name Amen Praise God from the wall blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above the heavenly walls praise father son and holy ghost 